Hi, my name is Joyce Vaudre from Vernon, and it just so happens today is the Vernon Community Network Fair. We're here at CVC Bolton Studios because we are part of the Vernon community. So I wanted to welcome you to our fair. Today we have several providers, but my favorite so far is, of course, the free food that is provided by the Great Harvest Bakery Company. And today, they're giving out free samples. I've already got my name on one of those apple cider uh, cakes. So the Great Harvest Baking Company, Bakery and Company, has not only walk-in service where they have beautiful coffees, they also have catering. So feel free to support your local businesses. Thank you for watching. We're gonna walk around the fair a little more to show you who else is here. There's a lot of activity even as we just opened. Hold on. Hi, I'm Mark Dewinsky, President of Community Voice Channel. And I'm Terry Lynn Rogers, President of the Vernon Community Network. And we just wanted to thank everyone for coming out here today. We have a whole new studio, 4K studio. We also do want to invite everyone to come down to check out the studio, help out doing filming and uh, learning our equipment. CVC. So we're hosting our annual um, provider fair here at CDC where I also sit on the board. So like Mark said, he's looking for volunteers as well as the Vernon Community Network. So you can easily check us out on our website, info at onevernon.org. And um, again, Terry Rogers, President of Vernon Community Network, hosting our annual provider fair. Thank you. So here we are at one of the many provider booths. Now this one may be a little different for most people to see, but we're here learning more about how medical marijuana can help you heal. And what's really interesting is the nurse practitioners we have here have brought numerous methods called the root in order to take the benefit of medical marijuana. So let's talk to these nurse practitioners here. Hi, my name is Joyce and your name is? Nancy Nurge and I'm a nurse practitioner. Hi, and I'm Sherry Peabody and I'm a nurse practitioner. Oh, thank you so much for coming today. So, oh, you're welcome. I, I'm very curious to see that there are different ways of helping you to get that, get that medicine into your body. And most people think the only way to do it is to smoke it. So what are some of the ways that you can tell us that are the easiest ways to, um, the, what is it, the root, the root to, it, to have the medicine enter your body? Okay, so um, I'm seeing a few things over here that look really unique to me. Um, you know, I, what are these in here, these little bottles? So these are tinctures. These are tinctures that you can put underneath your tongue or in your cheek or you can swallow. They go right into your tummy and then are absorbed or they can go directly from the cheek and absorb right through your bloodstream through your mouth. So these are um, very easy to take, but it does take a little practice on knowing how to dose. So that's one of the things that Nancy and I are working with is talking to patients on how to dose as well, as well as the pharmacists in the dispensary. Mm -hmm. So I understand that with your practice, you do have to customize it, whereas other types of medicine, it's one size fits all. So what's your advice? Um, the challenge you're dealing with is, and this is where I had to make the adjustment in my practice too, it's a plant. And how that plant interacts with you, me, or Sherry is completely different. So you've got to find out what route you want to take, which is how you want to ingest it. And that's, there's smoking, there's vaping, there's, as Sherry showed you, the tinctures, there's edibles. There are over a hundred types of products now currently available. So what we have to find out is what works for you. So that's where it's very personalized medicine. And that sometimes can be very frustrating for some people. Well, I, I couldn't help but notice that I also see some, it looks like a, a cream. So you can even do it topically? Exactly, exactly. Um, cannabis is spat soluble, so it'll go through the skin and be absorbed. And that way, if you have acute arthritis in your hands or things like that, you can rub it in. Most of my patients have it right by their bed. They rub it in in the evening and then when they wake up or after they shower in the morning for almost instant relief. Right. And Joyce, I just want people to know, you don't have to stick with one route of use. Right. As Nancy was just saying, you can have creams, you can do the topicals, you can do the tinctures, you can even vape 
and it will approach your symptoms and help alleviate even better than maybe just one route of use. So just that's another thing, beauty between Nancy and I, is we can talk to you about what, what might work best for you and your pain. Because pain is probably the number one um, issue that we see, anxiety is the other, and people age 65 and older are exploding in in our, our practice that's probably the yeah. biggest one like this right here this it's not this isn't how it comes but this is called a baking mix this is my number one probably recommended product people like edibles and they like the fact that they control how much is in there so this comes it looks like almost like a Knox gelatin packet and you put it into your own brownie or cookie mix you stir it into the dry ingredients and then mix it up and how you distribute it is by how many you make when I first started, I only did 36. Now I'm down to about 24, and I find I do that, and I take it right before I go to bed, and I sleep like a baby. So there are so many ways to do it. It's not just smoking anymore. Yes, and if that's overwhelming for folks about thinking about creating their own edibles, though the pre-made edibles are also an option in the dispensary. Very They'll true. make them for you, so you don't have to worry. There's always a way through any problem. So what is the dispensary experience for people who've never actually gone to one? That's, that's really important. I am so proud of what Connecticut is doing. Um, we have one of the safest profiles, as you know or may not know, we have four growers. And those four growers from seed to harvest to extraction, all of their products are grown within Connecticut. And then they go and they are independently tested by labs. So even though you can you can work on their safety profiles and understand you're not going to get heavy metals, you're not going to get toxins in there, a and you're also mold or, or or even God forbid what you get on the street has fentanyl in it. That's scary. Exactly. It is scary. Yeah. Scary. Then you go into a dispensary. Dispensaries are run by pharmacists. These are people who have doctorates in pharmacy. They're a lot brighter than me because they know all of these things. They have chosen to focus on cannabis. So when you go in there, they talk to you about how to order, what works, and then they work with you to help you make the plan best for you. But it is, it's very personalized medicine. So you've got to step up and say, okay, this is or isn't working for me. Right. And we, Nancy and I believe, Joyce, that education is empowering. And that's when we talk to the pharmacist at the dispensary, that's what they live and breathe. So we believe that you can be self-empowered by learning and taking control of your own health. And now, this is one way to do it. I have some very anxious cats and a friend of mine um, highly recommended it because she uses it for her dog. What can you tell me about my cats? <laughs> So, there, so there's a system called the endocannabinoid system. It's a healing system that not only you and I have, Joyce, but animals have. Now, I'm going to speak for dogs because I work with dogs, and I have a therapy dog, and I know how to dose animals, especially canines. So what you want to know is their endocannabinoid system or the balancing system, the healing system in their body is so much more sensitive than humans. So you have to not only be careful with the dose, you have to be careful the own, with what is in the CBD oil. They can have THC, but CBD, they can have CBD, and it has made a huge difference in my geriatric golden and her hips and her mobility. But you gotta make sure that it doesn't have anything other than MTC, which is an additive coconut oil. Nothing else, because they're so sensitive and it could be harming. I just, Very tiny doses. So when you said too much, I recently read an article that said, the only way you could overdose is you ingest 1,500 pounds of marijuana to overdose on it. You have to be careful. There's a difference between human beings. No one has ever died from medical marijuana. No one ever. They want to find that person, but they haven't. So that means, unlike every other drug I've ever prescribed, no one has died from this. But pets are different, and pets are much more sensitive. So while they 
might not pass, they may get sick if you're not careful in how to do them. Yeah. THC is very dangerous to pass. But CBD is something that you can buy just about anywhere, yeah. but you want to be careful where you purchase it from because CBD doesn't have the psychotropic effect that THC does. So the CBD, you don't need a prescription for it. You can go to, um, the, even the dispensaries are, are doing the CBD, non-THC. So you want the CBD to be lab tested, just like you want the other, exactly. the other um, point of marijuana, THC. You want a certificate of analysis with your CBD. And the good companies, good growers that do just CBD, they'll tell you what lab they get their CBD tested at. And you want to look for, again, certificate of analysis. Well, I really appreciate you ladies coming out here today. And uh, what would be the first step if someone was interested in potentially getting a medical marijuana um, uh, prescription? Our, our websites, mine's nancynurgenp.com. And mine is uh, hopeandhealingct.com. Well, thank you so much, and I greatly appreciate it. And I really hope you folks enjoyed this information. And please reach out to your provider if you want more information on how it can help you personally. As we continue walking through the Vernon Community Network Fair here at CVC Bolton, I was intrigued by this giant white truck. So let's see who brought this white truck and what it's all about. Hi, my name is Joyce. What's your name? Hi, my name is Mark Dewinsky. This is my daughter, Leah Dewinsky. Hello. And what is the name of your company? Bedbug Busters. Well, I like alliterations, but that's a doozy. Uh, what exactly is a bedbug buster? So what we do, we actually will eliminate bed bugs in houses, uh, apartments, condos, things like that. Um, and we do it all naturally without chemicals. So we use heat to kill bed bugs. Okay, so they like to be in warm, dark places. Why would you kill them with heat? So we bring up each room to 135 degrees. We have these special fans that create a hot vortex in that room. And it kills everything. Okay, so why don't you uh, tell me a little bit about all this interesting equipment. It, this looks like a, a roaster or something. So these are our heaters. These go into every single room. Uh, they're a, uh, a five-phase system, so they'll heat up individually and keep going up to 135 degrees. They cut off at 135. Um, so it usually takes us about a half hour to get up to temperature, and then we put these fans in the rooms and the fans are really doing the work because that creates a whole hot vortex in that room. We move everything in that room. We have silver trays that we put all their clothes out on, we bake them, we bag them, and then we put their mattresses up because again, you don't want it insulated. We want the heat to get into every nook and cranny of that place. Well that's very interesting. I, I was uh, just wondering if you've got such a unique business that I'm sure people really want. How come you don't have a giant sign on the side of this big white truck? So again, that's one of the things that we pride ourselves in. Um, we don't want to tell people that you have bed bugs. No one wants to know that you have bed bugs. You want to be very discreet about it. And we're in and out the same day. So all people see, all your neighbors see is a big white truck, a big white uh, trailer, and we're gone that day. And if anyone asks, we just say that we're drying up water because again it's heat and we're drying stuff up so you're not really lying um, what I see you have a computer inside a heavy-duty case here why do you need uh, all this high-tech equipment again um, this equipment kind of helps us out we have sensors that we put throughout the room and the computer will also tell us where we're not getting hot enough we can go through with a heat gun and test and find out where things are, where things are not hot enough, and we can adjust the fans accordingly. So we can make sure every area of that room is hot enough. And you said you're in and out in one day, so everybody has to leave. Everyone has to leave. Do you have to like tent it? No, nope. nope, it's not tenting. Again, this is all done internally. So it, it's very discreet. You don't have a big bubble around your house, nothing like that. We're, we're coming in, we put these in all the rooms. And like I said, bed bugs die at 119, we bring it up to 135. I really like the fact that it's non-toxic. Uh, I understand bed bugs are a huge problem, but in the idea that you're doing it with heat, 
it was very intriguing. I'm, I'm really happy to hear about that. How would someone reach you? Uh, what would be your web page? So our web page is bedbugct.com. You can take a look. Um, it gives you a tutorial on how we do it, how the process works. And um, it, it's very quick, easy. And again, all you have to do is leave with the clothes on your back. Um, we take care of everything else. Do you check the clothes on our backs before we leave? We have a, a, a criteria of how you're going to come back in. Because all your clothes will be all treated. Your clothes that you have on will not. So again, as you walk back in, you're going to put your clothes in a plastic bag. You're going to tie it up, bring it down to the dryer, put it on a high heat for an hour. And now we're all secure. I really was not expecting a good answer like that. <laughs> Thank you so much. So uh, is there anything you'd like the public to know about your services or spotting a bed bug problem? So again, spotting a bed bug problem, our number one problems are again, you know, you're having people come over or go to a hotel. So again, there are different criteria that I usually recommend when you're going into a hotel, and I can share that with everyone. Um, so again, when I go into a hotel room, um, your, uh, your shower, your tub area, it's white, it's porcelain. You can see if there's anything in there, right? So you're going to take your luggage. Instead of putting it on the luggage rack or putting it on the bed, you're going to put it in there. Um, now you're going to take a flashlight. Bed bugs don't like light. You're going to go around the seams of the mattress. You're going to look for white dots, black dots. You're going to look for anything like a, um, a scaling of a bed bug um, or actual a bug. And if you see that, you can take your luggage and move out. Well, I was always watching for little black spots. Now, now, you, now I got to watch for white spots too. Yes. The white spots are the eggs. Um, so again, those are different things that you want to take a look for. Um, but on, on average, again, it's not the end of the world. Again, one of the pluses about a bed bug, it does not carry disease. Okay, you got uh, ticks. You have mosquitoes that carry disease. So bed bugs do not carry disease, and they don't discriminate. So it doesn't matter if you're clean, dirty, whatever. They don't discriminate. Yeah, yeah, most of those parasitic things don't, do they just go wherever it's a warm body, literally. So thank you so much for coming today. I learned a lot, and I hope anybody that might have this problem now knows where to go for it. So thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. And we're going to move along to our next table. So as we move along the Vernon Community Network uh, Fair, I noticed this one table and uh, I wanted to introduce you to the person who is responsible for informing us of all these great organizations. So I'd like to introduce, um, hi, what's your name again? Hi, I'm Robin Kohler. I'm the site director at KidSafe Connecticut. We are an affiliate of the Village for Families and Children. Oh, the Village of Family and Children. Yes, I, I actually interviewed some folks from the Vernon Rocks program. That's the one that the teens help other teens, right? That's right. It's all about alcohol and drug prevention. Um, one of the, the displays here caught my attention, postnatal assistance lending support. I understand what postnatal is, but can you tell me a little bit about this organization? Sure. So one of the programs, it's one of our newer programs at KidSafe, is called PALS, Postnatal Assistance Lending Support. And we provide staff to go into the homes of families who have newborns. So we all know that, you know, babies don't come with manuals and it's very nerve wracking, very overwhelming, can be very scary. And sometimes you just need somebody to help you out. So we will visit that family in their home four times over 12 months. The child has to be um, zero to 12. 12 months and we help with whatever it is you need so if you just want somebody to talk to if you need us to meet you at the doctor's office because you're not quite sure you know how to handle bringing two kids plus the new baby if you want us to help you organize and help with meal preparation certainly give you resources you know just sort of be be there for the mom or dad or caregiver um, if it's a grandparent just to help you through those scary times so uh, I can definitely appreciate that <laughs> and I'd like to know how would someone get the ball rolling with that how would they reach you so you can definitely reach out to me at um, you can call the office 860-872-1918 um, they're five days a week call leave a message and we will make sure that you get um, a referral so this is 
part of the Village ne uh, Network. So if someone were to be on the Village webpage, would they be able to get more information also there? Absolutely, absolutely. So you could reach out to the village.org or kidsafeconnecticut.org and the information would be there also. Excellent. Robin, thank you so much for being here today. This is such wonderful information. I'm so glad to be a part of Vernon. We moved here from Central Mass. So I love, I love the town, love the area. So thank you so much for helping our community. I appreciate you hosting us today. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And here we are at another wonderful organization. Earlier we talked to a group that helped children from 0 to 12 months. Now this organization I just came across helps people 18 and up. So that covers a lot of ground. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to um, the your, YourCommunityCares.org. And uh, my name is Joyce. What's your name? My name is Michelle Puzo, the president and co-founder of Your Community Cares. What is the number one thing you would like people to know about your organization? More people need help at home. 10,000 people a day are turning 65 and we're an opportunity to help connect people to volunteers to help with housework, yard work, companionship, and transportation. There are many people that need help at home and are unable to pay for private caregivers, so we're an additional resource for people that need help at home. You have a very interesting table set up here. So like most tables, there are bags and t-shirts, but I gotta tell you, koozies and diapers. What a, what a mixture you got here going on here. So uh, how would someone get in touch with you? Yourcommunitycares.org is the opportunity for people to sign up to be volunteers across the state of Connecticut. We are in every town in Connecticut can sign up to be a volunteer or to refer someone to get help. Many people are home alone. They're coming home from rehab facilities or hospitals and need some more help. It's an opportunity to help a neighbor. What an awesome organization. So I, I really appreciate you coming out and helping us to understand what's available to us. This is a great community. I'm really glad you came out today to let everyone know that you're not alone. And if you need help, even if it's advice, you, you folks are there for them, right? Absolutely. Anyone can contact us through the website, yourcommunitycares.org. We're here to help and be a resource, whether that means you need some medical equipment, we can donate, or if you need a lending, we can lend a hand. So can people donate goods to your organization, or is, is it easier for you to take monetary donations? Monetary donations help us keep our website free for all participants. So there is no membership. It's all free for everybody. And that's where the donations do help cover the background checks because all participants are background checked. So we're trying to keep as safe as possible for people. I really do like all the steps you take for that in so many different services. So again, thank you so much for coming out. I hope that you folks out there, if you need anything like this, please reach out. There's plenty of things in this community to help you out. Your community is, is a wonderful organization. Thank you for listening. Well, here's a table that caught my eye. It was very bright and colorful. And being a certified teacher, anything that has to do with education, I'm interested. So we stopped at this table, and I'd like to introduce you to a few folks that are helping us to understand what are some of the other benefits we have in the Tolland County area. Hi, my name is Joyce, and you are? Joyce, I'm Kelly. I'm Suzanne. Thank you so much for coming out today. And what is the organization you'd like us to know more about? So this is EastCon Tallinn County Head Start program. Um, we are a nonprofit program. We offer free services for families and children um, ages three to five. Um, we work with them on their educational goals and any family goals that they may have. And we prepare them for kindergarten. That's really definitely needed. When, when I was in school, there certainly were not three and four year olds going to Head Start. So what are some of the services you provide to prepare a family for a child going into school? Absolutely, so we do um, in-home visiting every week. If the family's not comfortable visiting in-home, we can meet somewhere in the community or at the local library. Um, but we, we go to their home every week for an hour and a half and we empower the families. Uh, we feel that the families are the first and most influential teacher uh, for their children. So we like to empower the families on positive parenting behaviors and techniques. Um, 
development, child development, um, so that they feel confident about sending their child to kindergarten, but not only do they feel confident, but that child feels confident in knowing what they're stepping into when they go through those doors that day. One of the things I noticed as a teacher is things in your home can be used as a learning device. So I saw your colorful little teddy bears here, and you can turn games into learning. So what are some of the things that you, you have um, for, I see you have a board here with all these different supplies. These are things that you brought to the family and now they implement in their homes? Yes, so these, a lot of these photos were taken um, from our 2019 program year. Um, so that was when we were bringing um, some of our own educational materials into the home. After the pandemic hit, we started to transform the program a little bit into um, how, how can we have the families uh, realize that they have so many learning opportunities within the homes themselves and they don't have to go out and buy these toys, you know? So um, we use a lot of recyclable materials, um, you know, cardboard boxes, paper towel rolls, um, you know, any magnets that are on your fridge, literally anything you can find. There's literacy exposure everywhere, not only in the home, but in the community. So we're always showing parents where the learning opportunities are and how they can best utilize those to help their child's development. Thank you. So earlier, um, we were talking about other services provided specifically to the family. Did you want to fill me in on that again? Sure. We help family obtain goals that they're looking to obtain, like getting a GED, obtaining their license, saving money, reading more with their children. So anything that they want to explore and work on, we're there to support them. Yeah, you got to tell them Dolly Parton will give them a book too. Did you? <laughs> so you know about that organization. I love Dolly. She's so good. So how did you guys get involved in this program? Um, well, I've been working for ESCON for 22 years. I used to teach preschool here, and we are no longer in the school system. So this is a supplement program to support families with their child's development, let them know that they're the most important teacher in their child's life. And we also do socialization groups and play groups where we have all the families come together, and those are usually two hours, and we're do it. It's a learning opportunity and we set different things up. We might go to the pumpkin patch or the park. A play date for the whole family. What a great idea. Great concept. And, and how did you get started with the organization? Um, actually, my son was in the program. Uh, Suzanne was his teacher, or, or his home visitor rather, and um, Suzanne noticed that I worked really well with him and, and I had a, a bachelor's degree in child uh, studies. and. She told me about the opportunity, and I, I have been working with EastCon Head Start ever since. I love working with not only children, but the family, because I, I know how important it is um, for the child's development, for the family to be completely involved in, in that child's life. So for me, um, working with the entire family was very meaningful for me, and uh, I, I've loved working for EastCon Head Start ever since. I, I love that you take taking the whole Tallinn County, that, that's a big area and a little spread out. Uh, how would someone help the organization? What type of donations would you be looking for or volunteers or um, maybe a space to gather? Are, are any of these things uh, something that you guys would be interested in? So we always uh, take in-kind, which is in-kind donations um, for families. That's something that we would definitely, um, you know, benefit from all families could um, we're also always partnering with uh, you know community providers within Tallinn County to um, not only you know spread the word about the services that they offer but to see if they can let families know that walk through their doors as well about our program so that we can have a little give and take relationship and like you mentioned um, if we're looking for a space maybe in the winter to do our play groups we've uh, recently um, reached out to Ellington's library to see if we can use their space for our winter play groups and socializations for our families so that we're not stuck out in the snow at the park um, but but any any libraries or churches or anything like that that have like the space available in any of the towns in Tallinn County, um, we we would absolutely love to partner with them and, and uh, discuss opportunities for maybe holding socializations there. Excellent. Uh, I used to donate uh, to one of my favorite organizations, In Kind Donations, because I have a BJ's membership. Okay. So next time you're at BJ's, grab an extra pack of toilet paper. Uh, that's one of the things. You, hey, you never, you never have enough of that, right? 
Um, that was my favorite thing to, to donate because it was easy for me to do and I thought it was very helpful. So when you're saying in-kind donations, is that for the home or do you folks have an office? Do you work out of an office? Yes, um, well we do have a, a, our own small office um, in Tallinn, in Tallinn, or I'm sorry, in Vernon for the Tallinn County program. But EastCon itself has uh, the main office in Hampton. Well, thank you both very much for coming out today. I think this is a wonderful organization. This whole event for all of you to be networking with each other, it, it's, it's awesome. I mean, we're, we're covering all ages now. So uh, thank you very much as someone who's a professional educator. I greatly respect the work that you do and thank you for getting them ready for school. <laughs> thank you very much. Hi, for a head start. Yep, give them a call. As we continue walking through the VCN Provider Fair, I saw Kathleen here, whose voice is very distinctive. We hear her on the radio all the time. So uh, Kathleen, could you please tell us, what uh, are you doing here today? Well, I'm enjoying the sunshine, and I'm representing Access Community Action Agency. I love this agency. Uh, one of the things my friend really benefited from was your energy assistance program. Uh, this morning we woke up saying, oh no, we got to put the heat on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if someone's concerned about getting uh, enough money to pay their heating, how do they go about uh, getting some energy assistance? So the first thing someone would do would either contact Access Community Action Agency or you can also contact the town of Vernon. They are a subcontractor to the agency, so whatever you're more comfortable with. Uh, you reach out to either or and then uh, you are connected with an energy intake specialist who reviews your application. You are then, you go through an approval process and once that's completed, uh, your energy provider, whether that's uh, electricity, oil, wood, coal, pellets, I don't know if we have a peat provider, but whatever it is you heat your home with, we then send that provider uh, a check for the amount of money that you've, be, you are, uh, you've been qualified for and your energy assistance is paid for. So earlier we were talking about that, being qualified for, how, how do you find out if you qualify for this assistance? Right, so there are very specific documents that the uh, customer has to bring in to the energy intake specialist. We need to see a couple of months worth of past bills. Let's let's focus on the fact that you uh, you heat with uh, electricity, let's say. So you bring in your electric bill. You have to bring in some pay stubs or uh, proof of non-employment of any kind. If you're on uh, disability or so forth and so, we need to make the distinction between your income and your assets. And so that's done all through your intake process. Uh, when you make the appointment, the documentation that you need to have is told to you over the phone so you should be fully prepared uh, for the appointment and you can also check out our website www.accessagency.org and all the information is there. I really uh, picked up on the fact that you base it on income not assets so someone could be a homeowner yet still be qualified for this assistance. You can be a homeowner, you can be a renter, either direction you may qualify. It's really important to ask. Just ask the question, we'll help you understand the answer. Uh, also at your table is a newly funded um, support system and it is the COVID-19, um, what is it? Yeah, so this is part of the COVID relief fund money that's come to us through the federal government and the program is called Unite CT. And this program is specifically designed to help people who have not been able to pay their rent or their mortgage because of some COVID impact in their family. Um, the program provides up to $15,000 in rental assistance to an individual. So this is not chump change. That's a lot of money to help you pay your back rent. And if you're uh, a mortgage holder, a landlord, uh, or a homeowner, and you've had trouble with the same meeting, you know, maybe your tenant hasn't paid rent, maybe you've been out of work yourself, the program exists for you as well. Well, I really appreciate finding out about that. I know um, personally some people that have been impacted financially uh, with COVID-19. A lot of people don't think that they qualify or can be assisted by any of these programs. It seems to all be under one roof or under one umbrella. And is this uh, COVID relief plan, 
Is this part of your organization or do they need to go to Unite CT? So Unite CT is the name of the program and Access Community Action Agency administers the program. So if you walk through the doors at Access either at 1315 Main Street in Willimantic or 231 Broad Street in Danielson, it doesn't make any difference what your need is, whatever reason you came through that door, we will connect you with all of the programs that we have available. So one question can lead to another answer, can lead to another question and so forth and so on. And the next thing you know, you've gotten eviction assistance, you've gotten connections to maybe lawyers or to our WIC program, you've gotten energy assistance, maybe you've signed up for a, an employment service that we have, and maybe we can even help you with a bag of food. So the bag of food uh, brings me to your food bank, but also WIC is the women, infants, and children's program that helps families who have young children at home. And that is with food, but also other assistance, WIC is, at its very heart, a community nutrition program, and so if a pregnant woman or a woman who has, or I shouldn't just say women, family, uh, children up to the age of five, need financial assistance in order to provide nutritional food to their families, that's what WIC does. And the nutritional part is really important because it's not just a voucher for food. The WIC nutritionists um, actually do honest-to-goodness nutrition counseling, and, and through that process, all kinds of other problems can be solved. There are lots of reasons why kids don't eat something. It isn't just that it's yucky. There's all kinds of other things that are going on in a family where food is concerned. And the, the WIC nutritionists are very skilled at helping to navigate a lot of those problems, as well as providing uh, a voucher for nutritious food for the family. I think the educational piece with the family is critically important. As a public school educator, I did spend money on fresh fruits and vegetables and when a child is excited about grapes you gotta wonder um, what else are they missing out on so the WIC program has been around for decades and it's helped millions of people because you can't learn or grow if you're undernourished or hungry the, um, the food pantry is um, available uh, at, in Willimantic and Danielson, but I see you have a mobile food van coming up. Is it, yeah, when will we be seeing that schedule? So right now we are delivering to four uh, food insecure communities in the region. We also deliver to um, for more towns there, where there are large uh, senior residential, low-income senior residential populations. So we're, we're driving the van right to uh, Salem Village in Brooklyn, right to Parker Place in Tolland and serving those seniors. We are also onboarding a couple of other communities, uh, Summers, Ellington, Canterbury, uh, to help meet people's food needs in those communities. And, um, and then we have the two standalones in Willimantic and Danielson, and those are open uh, Monday through Friday. And we're on the road Monday through Friday. Very extensive network and such an array of services from you know children all the way up. Uh, I'll get to tell you, the, the heating prices do nothing but go up. So I'm very happy to hear that you cover all types of heating, not just oil. People think, oh, it's only oil assistance. So it's good good to hear about the, the rest of the program. You heat your home. It doesn't matter. We just know who just need to know who your vendor is. You got a wood guy. We want to give the wood guy you the money. You bet. <laughs> That's great to know. Thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate your time and this information is very important and, uh, and very, very uh, timely. Yeah. Timely. It, Thank you so is, much. It is the heating season, you bet. Oh yes. Thank you. Thank you. Now here's a familiar organization, the Cornerstone. It has been an institution in Vernon for decades and uh, I'd like to introduce you to one of their key helpers here. Hi, this is Joyce and what's your name? I'm Sharon Redfern, I'm the executive director. Sharon, you were telling me about some great things happening at the Cornerstone. I know it's a place I can go to donate clothes or to help with the soup kitchen, but what caught my eye is you folks provide diapers? We do. Um, we are part of the National Diaper Bank um, and the Connecticut Diaper Bank. So if you need diapers for your child, you can come to us once a month and get diapers. Um, we also can provide sanitary supplies for women. Uh, we do have a limited amount of adult diapers, but we can get more. Um, as all of our services, there's no charge for this. Um, it's easy enough to do. You go to our website and it tells you how to sign up and then you're able to come once a month and pick up diapers. So you mentioned your website. Those of us of a certain age, 
aren't that great at social media. So we were talking earlier about the fact that you do need all types of volunteers. Specifically, you'd love to get someone in there that could do your social media. What would be some of the other um, specific services you're looking people, for people to volunteer? Well, we need some specialized volunteers. We have a ton of volunteers in the kitchen and the pantry, but we have people who are leaving the shelter. They may need some job skills. They may need to beef up their resume. They may need to learn a little more about this or that. Um, so we would love to have volunteers who could come and provide some of that. We would also be interested if people are a retired social worker or case manager and they'd like to come help with some of our folks who need that. That would be amazing. Um, and finally, some technology. Um, you know, putting things on our website, putting things on our social media pages, helping do live streams at some of our events, uh, doing some virtual tours of some of our facilities so if somebody's interested in volunteering, they can see what it's actually about. Those kind of things. So a friend of mine uh, ran the National Honor Society out of the high school I worked. Um, I was wondering, you could tap into them. I mean, talk about helping you with your technology. Have you uh, reached out to the NHS? Actually, we have not. And interestingly enough, just yesterday, my daughter, who is a teacher, told me that I should contact the National Honor Society advisor at Rockville High School and ask about that. So I guess that's kind of the karma. Two people in a row have told me. So I, I guess I better hop on that Monday. I got to tell you, after teaching high school students, they would love to be playing with computers and earning credit for it. So, well, the credit is to graduate the National Honor Society. It has nothing to do with the actual schoolwork. Just want to clear that up. So, what is another thing you'd like us to know about the Cornerstone? You have special events? We do. We have, um, coming up, uh, depending on when this airs, we have a Halloween uh, boutique. We have a Christmas boutique. We have a prom program every spring where uh, men and women can come and get their dresses, their shoes, their makeup, their jewelry, and also for the women. Um, we have uh, a Christmas, Halloween, prom, there's one other one, oh, backpack, back to school. They can come and get their backpack, their school supplies, new clothing, underwear, shoes, um, seasonal things. So um, we do those every quarter. And I understand uh, recently there was an expansion um, where you, you were able to use another building. It, how's that working out? We purchased the old Tritown Shelter, which is the building when you come off of the highway with the white pillars, everybody seems to know. Yes. And we got it all refurbished and it's now our third shelter. It's a shelter for families. So right now we have all families staying there. Um, what's nice is it's all individual rooms and some of the rooms have um, multiple beds so we're able to put a whole family together, which we couldn't do before. So that's been a huge uh, break for us in terms of taking new people. I would imagine that someone with some, um, some skills that would help the transition of going from homelessness to their own home, uh, those types of people really needed uh, tax season, someone, an accountant, and uh, you mentioned you know, someone who's retired. You know, you don't, you have too much energy to sit at home, so come on down. How would someone go about volunteering? How would they get in touch with you? If they go to our website, they just click on the page that says volunteer. Um, what happens is there's a quick application, then we have a volunteer coordinator who then gets in touch with everybody who applies, talks to them about the various opportunities, and then sets them up with whoever the head of whatever thing they seem to be interested in and, and does it. Well, thank you so much for coming today. Um, uh, very interested to know more about the Cornerstone Foundation. Uh, I have been donating this since I, I arrived in the area about five years ago, and I'm not interested in the diapers, but it's really great to know that service is there, so if I do know somebody. So thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. Let's go see who else is here. Here I am at the food share table, and what really caught my eye was all this great plastic fruit. Um, so Sarah is here to tell us more about food share and what makes it a little different than a traditional food bank. Hi Sarah, what can you tell us about food share? Hello, my name is Sarah Hill and I'm here in Connecticut Food Share. We have wonderful programs, including our mobile food share, which is a pantry on wheels that distributes fresh fruits and veggies, no questions asked. We have them in every single town um, across Hartford and Tallinn County. We've recently expanded statewide, so we have mobile food share distributions really all over. 
please check us out on, on ctfoodshare.org for our most updated schedule. But here I have all of the towns that are local um, that again, you can go to anytime you want. These are twice a month every single month so please stop by also if you are looking to volunteer this is quick this is easy this is giving right back to your community you can sign up on our website as well we'd love to have you now where does the funding come from to purchase these fresh fruits and vegetables i would understand that at a food bank they they like the non-perishables so how exactly would it work with the fresh fruits and vegetables we are very lucky. We work with the Connecticut farmers, we work with grocery stores, so all of the surplus food that you see in the grocery store that maybe doesn't look perfect or they just need to move it quickly, we get. And then we have this system in to move the food directly out. Like we get it in one day, it's out the next. It's the fastest way to save produce. Um, we don't want to waste food. We don't. We do have like a way of giving all of the extra to the pig farmer once it's far gone, but... That was my next question. Yeah, we, we do compost and use pig farmers, but we do want to get this out to food. It's perfectly great edible produce, so. Yeah, I, um, I actually was visiting a buffalo farm and they were all chasing a tractor because it was dropping um, hamburger buns. So the animals, what we don't eat, they'll be happy to eat. Exactly. So um, you mentioned the pig farmer. It, it, that's kind of like the last stop, yep. the last stop of that. So uh, what what is the one driving force behind the whole food chip being fresh fruits and vegetables? Because food is a human right, number one. Food should be for everybody. And there's a direct correlation between healthy food and the way you feel and the way you act. And we can see in a lot of our pantries, um, shelf stable, you know, some things high in sugar, salts and fats, and that's not going to be good for your body. And so we want to create access, access to fresh fruits and vegetables and create a platform to get it to people where they need it very quickly. But what happens when you find a fruit and vegetable and you don't know what to do with it, do you, do you help people with that? We sure do. We do have recipes and we work with our awesome community providers like Yukon Snap Ed and U University of St. Joseph Snap Ed. You go on there, you put in the item and it will give you like 12 different recipes, how you cook it, how to prep it. Um, we also have people sometimes on sites providing recipes, but I say, you know, like mix it up, see what we got. Um, I know now how to use cabbage and I did not before and artichoke, so hey. I recently learned to roast Brussels sprouts and to saute okra. Most Ooh. people fry okra, but I sauteed it and it was yum. So please try okra. So tell me a little bit about this Tri-Town South Windsor action team. Hunger action team, yes, we are the hats. We are the community engagement portion of Connecticut Food Share. So for years, we've been giving out food more and more every year, right? But hunger's not subsiding. So we're like, what else can we do? So we are the community engagement. We get out with people who care in the community, with all of these wonderful service providers, and we meet monthly and we're like, what can we do? How can we make a direct impact on our community and provide local solutions based on who we know the people you know so like how can we help and it's completely ground up we meet we network we write grants we volunteer and we just help one another then it's open to anybody so if anybody knows how to write grants uh, this is the group that you want to contact so here at the VCM provider network fair we're meeting all of the different people that provide services to everyone and anyone so please reach out how would someone reach out to your organization they can find us on social media. We have a bunch of hunger action teams um, or on our ctfoodshare.org under like action items, we're there. Excellent, and I guess this is another organization that could use volunteers. They do um, have teenagers volunteer also. So once again, hello, National Honor Society. Come on and get your credits. So thank you very much, Sarah, for coming. You've been a joy to talk to today, and I'm so thrilled your organization is here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So, and uh, we're going to move along to some other tables. Thank you for being with us. We'll be right back. Well, I got to tell you, I'm learning a lot about what's available for services in the Vernon area and Vernon specifically. So here I'm stopping at another interesting table, and uh, what is your name? My name is Candace. I am an account manager with Caregiver Homes. We cover the whole state of Connecticut. Uh, we support the caregiver. If somebody is living 
um, with someone 65 or older, a parent, grandparent, friend, aunt, uncle. Um, it cannot be a spouse in the state of Connecticut. The caregiver can be paid tax-free monthly, averages $1,500, and they also receive the support of a registered nurse and social worker through Caregiver Homes. Um, this is a program on the Connecticut Home Care Program for Elders. We are supporting aging in place and family taking care of family. So that phrase, aging in place, uh, we worked really hard to be able to do that with our family members. Uh, I strongly believe in that. The, uh, what are the qualifications? Uh, so you have to be in the same home, but you can't be a spouse. And you mentioned it's a financial benefit, but also you mentioned other services. Is that in the home? Yes, it is in the home. Um, so it's on the Connecticut Home Care Program for Elders. It's a Medicaid-based program. So of course there's financial um, criteria that has to be met um, for that person that's 65 or older. On the home care program, there are other services that can be put in place, such as Lifeline, home delivered meals, nursing, um, whatever would keep that in individual home safely. Um, we are supporting the caregiver. It's called adult family living. So we are really supporting that family member or friend that is caring for a loved one. And how would somebody go about uh, getting in touch with you folks and if they needed training or anything, is that something you would also help them with? So um, we do have social workers and registered nurses available. They are there um, to answer and support the whole way through. So with any questions or supports that may be needed, somebody would call me. I would screen to make sure that somebody is eligible for this beautiful, amazing program. Um, and I would also make the referral to the state for the home care program for elders. Do you work, uh, do your folks, are they volunteers, the people that train the caregivers, or is this something where these are professionals that are on staff with you? Correct. These are professionals, uh, social workers and registered nurses. Um, we also created an app called Vela, V-E-L-A, um, that is an amazing resource for those caregivers if they ever need um, additional support. It's an upload, you can upload documentation, you can um, answer questions via that 24-7. Will someone teach me how to do that? I gotta tell you, everybody says it's so easy just to upload it. Uh, so first I'd need that lesson. Um, I, I'm kind of joking, but not really. So when you get to be uh, of a certain age and your parents are not able to take care of themselves as they used to, um, this app, how would that help out the caregiver? So the caregiver uh, will be helped along the way with that app um, and it helps them because they can use it as a portal, a resource um, and ask questions at any time and it'll be answered um, by a social worker or registered nurse as soon as possible. Thank you very much for doing that. I, I just, I'm so thrilled to see that uh, so many people are being taken care of and everybody wants to be able to stay home as long as possible. So I think this really helps out with the, with the families and uh, alleviate some of the pressure. Yep, absolutely. So, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. All right, see you later. And now we're going to see what else we have here today. As we walk around the VCN Provider Fair, I couldn't help but notice a spinning wheel. Let's see, I won a coupon. Uh, I'm here with uh, somebody from the Tudor Doctor, and who am I talking to today? Amy Blank. Hi, Amy. So nice to meet you. What, are you getting ready to hand me one of my coupons? I am. There you go. Uh, welcome to Tutor Doctor. We're an in-home tutoring service. We tutor all ages, all subjects. I like to say from 2 to 102. I've had infants, uh, well, toddlers, I guess you would call them, up to a 90-year-old woman who wanted to learn online banking. So we do everything in between. I got to tell you, online banking... Yeah, it's a blessing and a curse. I agree. So I can understand why someone would need help with that. Do you do virtual learning also, tutoring? We do. We do in-home as well as online tutoring. Um, we come right to the home. We work with organizations um, like DCF and those that work with DCF. But we also do in-home tutoring for families as well. Excellent. I see you also have gift certificates. We do. So if somebody wanted to help out a family member or a friend, they can get a gift certificate. How would you, somebody get in touch with you folks? We have our website, which is www.tutordoctor.com, and just choose the Hartford East location. 
So I'd like to know um, what had what made you get into the tutoring field? Um, were you a traditional classroom teacher before? I was not. I was a retail manager uh, for almost 20 years, and my daughter had some difficulties, and I needed a more flexible schedule. So I decided to look into something and found Tutor Doctor, and I love it. I can work, but I can also give back to the community. And that's primarily why I work a lot with DCF and the, the foster care system. Yeah, working in public schools, I found myself oftentimes talking to DCF. Um, and usually it was actually in a, in a good response. They were there to be part of the educational team, which, you know, you want full service, uh, uh, full circle services. Uh, is there, do you have to qualify for your program? No, we have, um, we do, every, you know, everyday people mm -hmm. can come and, you know, just purchase a package. We sell packages of ours starting at 12, going up to 96 and we can customize a package for someone as well. We have payment plans, um, flexible schedules, and we also, like I said, work with organizations, and with that, I can invoice pretty much anyone. So you would fall along with the Common Core standards or any, anything else that would be in place for a public school? Yes, yes, we can help students with um, just getting up to getting up to speed to their grade level and we can also do supplemental tutoring uh, we, we customize the package to the student as opposed to having one lesson that you know anyone in that age group does uh, that's definitely a concern of mine uh, you know having to make accommodations because different people learn differently so uh, I really like that you keep saying that it's customized to the individual. You really, that's the best way to get through to people. I would imagine it also builds confidence in the students. It definitely does. It's, it's amazing how big of a smile kids get on, our, get on their face when they actually get it. It's like that aha moment and it's, I love it. I, I find it just, I, I go out and I do consultations and I'm, go and meet the family and the student and that way I can find out their specific needs and that's how we can cater the package directly to them. While that truck was rumbling by, <laughs> your face lit up when you said, and I love it, and I, I, I really feel that and I wanted to make sure that the folks, when they saw your face, they know you, you really want to make that connection and seeing the joy, someone who's making the connection notices things like that. So thank you very much for helping our, our, our community and people to, to improve and learn new things. So if you're interested in learning something new and you need a little assistance, you can give the tutor doctor a call. So here we are at a table that caught my eye because it's not only um, youth services, but they're based right in Vernon. And I'd like to talk a little bit about what they do at the Vernon Youth Services Bureau. And here we have uh, Michelle. Yeah. Hello. Um, so Vernon Youth Services is a town department and we basically coordinate um, services for youth for the Vernon community. So we do a variety of things. We, um, we, we offer some programming, um, after school program, we have peer leadership at the high school, summer youth employment during the summer. Um, and, we, and in addition to providing programs, we also do um, referral, referrals for other services um, such as mental health, ish, mental health um, needs or um, nutritional needs, that sort of thing. So a family who's looking for information on what is available in the community for their child can call us at Youth Services and we can provide them with that information. Well, thank you so much. I, I see you've got great partners. We were talking earlier with the Vernon Rocks Coalition, so that's one of their partners. Uh, I have a warm spot in my heart for that group. Again, being a high school teacher, so I think the, the focus on children helping children, teens helping teens is a, is a wonderful way to, to get a message across. Thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate it, and I see you're sharing a table with some of your uh, other town folk. Yep. Um, so the Crumbling Foundations, the folks at CVC did a wonderful um, uh, document, documentary about the Crumbling Foundations. So there are still services available? Um, yes, I, um, yes, you can, you can complete an application um, through social services um, if you do, if you're interested in, in um, 
getting tested for your foundation to see if it is a crumbling foundation. So yes, that is still happening. That's really good to hear. It's It's been a, a very frustrating process when we were looking to buy in the area, and it really broke my heart. As I was saying earlier, uh, my husband's been in the construction industry for over 30 years, so to, to see something like that happen, I'm really glad that the, the communities pulled together and there are resources. So thank you for helping to organize that. And the, the one last thing I just want to point out is um, the town of Vernon also has a Department of Social, Social Services. Um, it's not necessarily something that you do, it's you're sharing the table with them. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything you can tell us about the Department of Social Services that you want folks to know? Um, just that um, the social services department is located right in the town hall and they also um, assist with a lot of um, social service needs that community members have. Um, energy assistance is one of their largest programs. Um, they do rentals, renters rebate um, applications are processed through that department. Um, they do many things for youth as well, um, a holiday gift program back to schools, um, clothing supplies. Um, so again, if you, if you are, you know, if you live in Vernon and you um, have some social service needs, if you call them, they will be able to connect you to resources in the community as well. Michelle, thank you so much for helping out your table mate here. I appreciate it. And thank you so much for coming down today to the VCN Provider Fair. Thank, thank you. So thank you. You're welcome. So now we're inside. Today we're celebrating the VCN Provider Fair and CVC Bolton is the place where we're doing it. So we wanted to make sure you got an opportunity to see what happens inside because you know what? You too can learn how to use a camera and be in front of the camera. As you can see, I love being in front. I would like to introduce you to one of the many volunteers we have here who started at school learning about it. So let's talk to one of the volunteers who's been great help today and other days. Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name is uh, Shane Carlo. I've been volunteering here for, I believe, four years. Four years? You look very young. How old were you when you started volunteering? I started volunteering when I was 13, I believe. I the Bolton Central School runs an AV club uh, club for this place and I and I decided to join it and four years later here we are you know you and I probably started about the same time because when I found this place I loved it I loved everything about it so tell me uh, a little bit about your favorite thing to do here at CVC as a volunteer it's definitely the camera work to work at, on cameras so so expensive and also and also so oh, well de designed it is amazing so you're, you're taking advantage of the new 4K studio they have here, right? I can neither confirm nor deny that statement. <laughs> well, it's great to meet another volunteer who loves this place as much as I do. So I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Shane. I'll be seeing you around the studio. All right. So uh, as you can see, we have a new studio set up here. It's been open for a while, but due to circumstances beyond our control, we haven't been filming a lot inside. So I'd like to show you a little bit about what I see behind the scenes. So here's our beautiful set. Melanie and the crew always do a great job of doing set decoration and also making it comfortable for all of us. One of the things I always ask for on set is our US flag. Melanie, thank you so much for accommodating that. If you are in the area that's serviced by CVC Bolton and you'd like to talk about your organization or you're looking for some, um, some way to get the word out, this is the place to do it. Get onto the CVC webpage and contact Melanie. She'd be happy to have you come in and maybe be interviewed by me. Uh, also, they still have the CVC workshops where you too can learn how to use the camera. Shane has been using it for several years, and I too learned the behind the scenes. But as you can see, I like the in front of the scenes. So here we have the backdrop where it's this beautiful blue color, which is very conducive to camera, uh, camera work. And we also have a video display. So if you want to come on the show and you have something you want to show online, you can do it here. You know, just last night, we actually had a live band here playing music. We were recording it. There were people dancing. It was a wonderful experience. So you can also provide content for your community. Your community, your content. As you can see, we have a beautiful setup. The microphone uh, cables come up out of the floor, so you folks that are watching don't see it. When we're sitting here at the table and at the chairs, we have uh, lavalier mics so that you folks, all you see is that little tiny black, little tiny microphone. 
And as we walk to the other side of the stage, which by the way is an elevated platform, so those of us 5'1 really feel tall here. We um, also did a game show here once. It was uh, High School Feud. Look that up on YouTube, and I'm really looking forward to doing that again. So if you're a, a high school here in this area, then please contact us about doing a, a, a school feud type of environment. So as we walk over here, Melanie's going to pan over, and Sh Shane is showing us how he gets set up to do a shot. And when, when the camera operator is panning, as Shane's doing now, he's moving side to side, he can watch what he sees in his monitor. This way, he can keep an eye on if someone goes out of frame or if the director asks him to zoom in or zoom out, he can keep a close eye on it. Uh, just like a typical TV studio, we have the red and green lights. The red light is your friend. That means the camera is on you. So if you have an organization that you'd like to get the information out, or you too would like to learn how to use 4K equipment in a real studio, then give us a call, get on the webpage, contact Melanie, she was an awesome instructor, and you too can be a part of your community, creating content. Now, here's the real behind the scenes. How many of you have actually seen a control room for a TV studio? Well, Mal's here to show me what goes into actually putting on a show behind the scenes? One of the first computer monitors I saw when I came in is uh, a computer that we use to add titles. So, Mal, it's been a while since I took my lesson, but could you tell us a little bit about this particular part of it? Sure. We, uh, we pre-make the titles, and this enables us to uh, bring them up at any time during a live presentation. Uh, it can describe who's on the screen. It can give information. We have things as if you see here, we have a first selectman. If we go down a little further, we show their website. We can use it and we can change the icons on the screen, etc. But so if we're shooting live and let's say uh, we want to give the information about how to contact the town and we're going to use this slide, if we come over to our live cameras here, and we simply hit the space bar, up on the live screen comes the contact information. And to get rid of it, we just... So that we're now looking at the view where Shane, our camera operator, is focusing on the center stage, and we can see how he's got it framed properly. And how do you communicate with Shane when you want him to change the camera view? I have a headset on, as does uh, any of the camera operators and I simply uh, can speak to Shane so if you look at Shane right now I'm gonna ask him if he can hear me and he'll just either give me a thumbs up or shake his head and I'm gonna ask Shane now to please zoom onto the uh, flowers on the pedestal in the middle of the set and as you can see he's zooming in then he's gonna hold and then he's gonna slowly zoom out so we can ask him to uh, do anything with the camera. He, he can truck it in, he can pan it to the right or the left or up or down, and at the same time the people on stage don't hear any of this communication and we can we can uh, put up whatever view we want to we show. Well coming from someone who's usually in front of the camera, uh, I can vouch for the fact that I don't hear those directions but I do see some hand signals, and some of the hand signals I'm looking for are the countdowns to when we need to wrap it up. So Mal's gonna show us why he's got a computer monitor with like nine different views on it. What, what is that, what are we looking at now? If you look at the master monitor, which also can be viewed on the, the TV up to my right, uh, we, I can look at every single camera that we have hooked up uh, if you look through here, you'll see camera one, two, three, and you'll also see uh, the ME1 program on the right top. That's what's live going out on the air now. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to fade between pictures, I have a preview, meaning when I move this control on the panel, it will go from that picture to that picture on the live screen. So here we go with a fade. Below that on 
the master screen. There are all the cameras that are available right now. We have eight different slots. We have three live right now. We also have a sky cam that we use in terms of uh, beginning shows and, and ending shows. It's an overview camera where you actually can see the folks on stage, you can see the cameras, uh, just, just an effect so people really realize where we are. We're in a studio, not out uh, on a set. So you've been around here a long time. What got you started at CVC? Well, to be very honest, my master's is in uh, media, oh. uh, education, media production. Uh, I was a teacher. I spent 15, 16 years with the IBM company, uh, and then I went on to be the director of business and technology in a public school system. You know what? We used, we used to be rivals. I was at Digital Equipment Corporation. <laughs> so we're friendly rivalry, and, and look where we are now. By the way, Digital paid for my degree in environmental studies. So uh, yeah, I warm spot in my heart for them, too. So how did you get hooked up with CVC? You, you've obviously got the uh, formal training, but how did you get here? Well, I, I was flipping through the channels one night, and, and I saw CVC and said, what's this? And, and for years, I knew that there were, quote, cable stations available. And so I made some calls, and, and it's funny because I've always had an interest in media production. Uh, I'm coming from the days, my training, you say I have the training. I do have the formal training. It was with one-inch videotape. Uh, had never, had never played with any, any digital. Uh, and uh, I came in, I think the first class I took was the camera, the yeah. studio class. And then I took the mobile class. And uh, about a year later, I was asked to join the board of directors. And I spent a lot of my time here. Uh, I spent a lot of my time editing shows. I produce a few shows. And uh, it's just a great place to be. It's a great thing to do, to volunteer. And especially with the great people that we have working here at Community Voice Channel. I can't say enough about them. Um, so he was talking about these uh, different classes. It's free, and they're very small classes. You really get like a one-on-one -on -one experience uh, for the in-studio 4K training. After you do that, then you can get field producer training by Melanie one-on-one, -on -one, so you too can take a camera out and record and create original content. For someone like me who loves being in front of the camera, I love being able to take it with me. I can set up the tripod, record something, and somebody like Mal will actually do the editing. Most recently, Melanie helped me edit Rockstock, where um, we, we were going live, we got to see a motorcycle jump, and I created the content, but Melanie did all the editing. So please, if you have any interest whatsoever, you can bring down, oh, talk about old media, they'll take your VHS tapes and create it onto digital media. So if you want to get those old images onto digital, including photographs, this is the place to do it. So CVC Bolton has so much to offer. It services a community of seven towns, and we really encourage folks to get involved. Take the training, volunteer to help at an event like this, but it's a, a great opportunity to learn a new skill, and who knows, maybe you'll get to be in front of the camera too. One more thing we do here, and it's brand new. What's that? We now have, are able to transpose or move your old eight millimeter and super, milli, super eight millimeter film to digital images at very, very competitive prices. Well, being a nonprofit, this organization uh, is able to provide community services uh, with many free and reduced cost items. So please, if you have any interest, uh, teenagers can also take this. Make it a family event. Don't go to a paint party. Come on down here and learn how to use digital equipment. Remember, don't just watch TV, make it.